Good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, I, my name is Arkadiusz Wutkowski. I will have the pleasure to be the host of our panel. And we've invited a three experts. Hello. And now we've got a remote connection today, as if we've had a real TV studio. I'm very happy that you found the time. We've got Konorata Jarocka, uh, Ms. Barbara Kowalska from Carrefour, and we've got Konrad Wacławik from uh, Nielsen. My name is uh, Arkadusz uh, Witkowski. I'm from ABM, and I also um, do market analysis. So this means that we've got people today who listen to customers every day, listen to what they have to say, and I hope that during our panel uh, that we will talk about this. Uh, the European Green Deal is a, a leitmotif of the entire conference, and our panel is dedicated to the consumer and shopper. And I would like to uh, look through the eyes of a consumer and the shopper uh, and think about all this through their eyes. Uh, the entire conference is about fitting, adapting. The first question to our panel members, to what degree our consumer is ready to adapt to this uh, green deal? To what extent uh, the strategy in the green new deal is uh, consistent with uh, the expect expectations of these consumers? Let's begin our debate. Anyone who seen who wants to begin? If I may. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the invitation because this topic, as regards the Green New Deal and the Carrefour strategy, uh, both the Carrefour Group and the Carrefour Poland, we are a company for whom these topics are very close to our hearts because we are a liaison uh, between what's going on in the market, in uh, the production world, the uh, uh, government decisions, and the customers. So distribution also means the selling of products and cons contact with the consumers. We look, watch, and react to uh, different uh, consumer attitudes, and we feel that everything that is tied to the Green New Deal is very important and that the consumers change. Their sensitivity is changing. And the direction and setting the goal in terms of all the elements within the Green New Deal are focused to which, uh, on which uh, uh, direction our customers, uh, our customers' uh, behavior goes to. For, for example. Uh, good nutrition and everything uh, uh, about health. Uh, according to the uh, research of uh, uh, public opinion, uh, uh, green products are uh, seen to be healthy products. What we see uh, in the market as regards uh, green products is really changing. More and more people are turning to green products. Uh, considering them to be healthy. So, uh, the research shows that 70% of uh, Polish consumers uh, are aware of this problem uh, of uh, su sustainable development, health, healthy food, etc. I looked over these this research very uh, in much detail. Only 17, 17 percent. Uh, uh, of polls are actually doing something about it. So we are at the beginning of the road. 
at the starting point. To what degree uh, these environmental issues are more than declarative, uh, that they're becoming something which is actually being put into practice? Uh, Ms. Honorata, how do you feel uh, these environmental issues are important for consumers? Let me introduce myself. Thank you for uh, being uh, le allowing me to be part of the panel. It is an interesting issue because we want uh, the consumers to uh, implement uh, these uh, change of attitude of awareness. The pandemic had has shaken our priorities to some degree, and this is a good starting point because we've uh, researched. Uh, the cons uh, consumer attitudes and the beginning of the pandemic where they said their own health is more important than the health of the uh, planet. This is a natural reaction. Uh, the beginning of the pandemic was really st stressful, unpredictable. So it's obvious that uh, the consumers put their own health ahead. Uh, whereas in the post-pandemic uh, reality, these environmental issues will uh, ring stronger, and uh, we can't get away from that. And uh, the ideal I situation would be that a product provides profits to the uh, consumer, but also good for the environment. When uh, uh, when we checked uh, the attitudes of non-users uh, who uh, or use. Uh, uh, Climate neutral uh, products, uh, polls uh, say they don't uh, do uh, this because of three reasons. 37% because it is too expensive. Uh, uh, the second uh, reason was that you don't really know what is in the product, whether the label is right, and three, that the availability is low. So we need to educate and distribution. So distribution, uh, price is a main uh, motivator. This hasn't changed for years. On the one hand, we've started to look at ourselves particularly, but for the communication, which Honorata says, that people aren't fully aware, health can be a good helping point. Let this be particular. Let it be personal. Perhaps this might lead to a change of behavior. I all feel that what we're talking about is perhaps a new uh, social pact between the producer, distributor, and consumer. If these three parties don't say yes, if someone, uh, uh, if someone uh, doesn't want in, uh, it won't work. We want the consumer to believe. We want uh, them to uh, get convinced. What? How can we convince them, Conrad? Is this consumer uh, awareness growing? Thank you very much for this question. Yes, in fact, we can say that the most effective argument is, or the most convincing one, is the need to ensure a benefit to oneself which directly corresponds to my A's. That is uh, looking after my own health, uh, my budget. And we have several examples, like, for example, reducing meat in our diet. If we say, for example, how many vege uh, cons consumers we have, there are not so many. But look how many people have reduced the amount of meat that they consume, 40%. And uh, the main reason is taking care of one's own health. So this is like flexitarianism, isn't it? Uh, it has been said that over a million people said in Poland that we will not eat meat. But another huge number says, yes, I am aware, we're speaking of three million consumers who are very ready to take the decision to resign from eating meat. I love figures, so I have to quote them from time to time. Sorry, can you continue? Another example, which is very interesting, it is the question of reducing, okay, single use of plastic bags. 
if we look at the results uh, of uh, the research of the ministries of environment before the introduction of regulations which introduce additional price for taking a plastic bag, we had the use of 900, 900 foil bags per person, per pole. Right now we have nine, so the reduction is great. And this is due primarily to the fact that we have to pay a little bit more for that plastic bag. So this is the second mechanism which can directly impact the uh, proceeding of a given consumer. We know that the climate is our common good, of course, and it's very difficult to invest our own money in uh, common good. But if we have such benefits as health, additional price, something that we can save on or that we can avoid, then it's much easier to take a decision which is more pro-environmental. I'm making short notes to develop some slogans so that I can uh, pass them on uh, to, the, to a further meeting. So my conclusion is, is that you have to take care of your consumer, you have to invite him, you have to ask him. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not a bad idea for the regulator to introduce some restrictions. Of course, these shouldn't be great penalties for the consumer, to, but a suggestion of restrictions is a good idea. Okay, let's switch sides. So I'll ask Conrad once again, uh, you spoke about healthy food, about meat, non-meat diets. Well, I will ask you directly that this is a competitor for non-meat markets. Or do you think both markets will develop in Poland uh, concurrently? From your point of view, according to the results of your analysis, I think the difference is in the category. So we have the category of uh, the segment or non-meat or non-animal segment, for example, milk. This segment of the non-dairy milk, in fact, is a huge category of milks. So it's a big market at the moment. In the nearest years, I think those markets will develop parallelly, so this is not a threat. The, 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 the vegan market is not a threat to the non-vegan market, nor the other way around. And we have rising awareness that we no longer have to be uh, afraid uh, of buying non-dairy products. If we look at what we consume during our grills, then we have vegetarian uh, hamburgers, apart from sausages that we traditionally eat, and this is not surprising for anyone anymore. So I think these markets will develop parallelly. Producers, which were present in the traditional market, the meat market or the animal market, invest uh, quite a lot of uh, money into the non-animal segment. and. So this is confirmed by the fact that both are developing and will be able to develop in the future. But if we think of the year 2050, we can say that this vegetarian market, vegetable market, will have to increase and it will be at the cost of the traditional animal markets. Thank you very much. Most probably, this rising category of non-animal food wouldn't have a chance if it weren't for the decisions of distributors. This is all related. I did my first research as, uh, over 30 years ago, and they asked me with a, a measuring band to check how much room the product uh, takes. On the, on the shop shelf. For me, it seemed very funny, but that's exactly what I did. And it seemed that it was a very good measure for measuring uh, how many uh, products or what kind of products are there. And I have noticed that right now, 
that this is not a 30 centimeter or 30, 50 centimeter uh, long shelf of non-animal goods, but right now it's up to a meter or even one and a half. So now I would like to ask, uh, did you feel an impulse from the consumer that they wanted more of these products from the point of view of the distributor? Can you say a few words? Well, when it comes to issues related to the vege, vegetarian uh, goods, in our shops, we always listen to our clients, to our customers. So we uh, try to listen to the needs of our clients and then adjust the goods that we have on our shelves to what our customers expect. So if we ask the market whether they want vegetarian or vegan food, I can say that today this is a small share of the market but developing quite dynamically. So today we have about over 1,500 types of products to meet the expectation. That means 500 different types of uh, foods, Vega foods. So this is a very dynamically developing sector, market sector. If I may add something, yes, this is a category that keeps growing, Conrad. So our research also shows that we are evolving. Uh, we have uh, a lot of success in introducing innovations to our market. And we can see that from year to year, the number of products grows that are very successful. And they communicate through the so-called uh, uh, conscious, uh, conscious choice of the consumers. Uh, looking at the packaging, which is recycling, whether something is good for our planet. And four years ago, it was below 25%. Now, it's uh, decidedly over 50% of the market. That means the new products or the retailers introduced on the market more often have the features of uh, that uh, are connected with environmentally friendly products. Well, I will have to go to the plenary session uh, very soon, and I have to put that into a bullet point or a slogan. Those people didn't have a chance to listen to what you said. So, summing up, we are talking about various entities of this market, the key entity, of course, is the consumer. But we also spoke about the regular uh, that means governments of various countries. We have producers and distributors. So I have a question going along these lines. The question is to Honorata. Now, who should take on the responsibility or, or the success of this um, Green Deal? Can we pass it on to the consumers? who have pressed so hard the other entities that they have decided to be more uh, ecological, or is it the question of the regulator, or maybe we have to have a military action, otherwise we won't be successful. From your point of view, can you tell us something? Can the consumer take on this responsibility, and does he take on the responsibility? Of course, we're all connected. And uh, the long-term success uh, means going hand in hand. Certainly, uh, there is uh, an issue of, uh, uh, of uh, trust in the government and government agencies. Most Polish consumers do. Uh, and uh, that uh, the players, actors in uh, the consumer market, the foodstuffs market, uh, is uh, honest. Uh, it's similar with shopping uh, networks, shopping chains. The consumers also want uh, them to work. 50% uh, feel that uh, shopping chains are uh, honest, 25% no, 10% none. Uh, allow me when 
we probably have heard uh, the PWC research uh, asked consumers who should be responsible, mainly responsible. And what's interesting, I was surprised that uh, they said that the government should be responsible. 32% said, responded that mainly the government. Uh, the consumer uh, felt that they should uh, be uh, responsible is 20%. The producer manufacturer 15%. I don't know how it happened, but I didn't find distributors on this list. And from my point of view, uh, it's they that makes make the profits and they are responsible. We know this, but do the people know? Do other entities know? Back to you. I'd like to have, add about the consumer that perhaps not everybody realizes the strength or uh, capability to make things better. But our uh, research shows that 73% of Polish respondents uh, uh, is make that their decisions make a difference. That's also about this plant-based uh, food trend. This trend is uh, not a small niche uh, of consisting of vegans or uh, vegetarians. It's now about flexitarians, and it's a great tendency because it shows that uh, the uh, people we're talking to with this plant idea is growing very much, And but this means a new attitude necessary and uh, ch new challenges. It's not enough to have plant-based products. They must be affordable. They must be nutritious. They need to have the right recipe, but the communication also has to be much more inclusive. And uh, analyzing uh, new products in our database, we can see that there is a big dynamic, big growth of uh, plant-based claims. So it's plant-based, plant-based, plant-based. So we are. Uh, uh, it's not uh, just about product for vegans, it's for everyone, and it enriches our diet. Conrad said that these vegan plant-based uh, products uh, shouldn't, are not uh, uh, crass anymore, but now they are in the mainstream. But we still have places in Poland where uh, it's uh, the pork chop that's uh, health healthy and that the kid has finished their meal and this is coming up and uh, the fact that we found a halloumi in at a uh, large supermarket it uh, it is far away from the barbecue today we've got uh, the last six minutes of our meeting I'd like to ask I want our meeting to uh, have a legitimate effect. I will make a short report on it as well. I want to, th for us to think together how we could uh, communicate our strategies, which we're so keen on, and to whom, which of these issues should be taken care of. If we've got a budget for lobbying or PR people, where would you allocate this budget? That's first. And second, how would you want to communicate? Uh, what target group would you begin with? Whoever comes first? Everyone has two minutes. Let me begin. From my point of view, it seems that we lack the tools thanks to which the consumer could tell the difference between products which are uh, in line with the strategy of sustainable development. We've got uh, the organic food leaf, which means something, but uh, the consumers don't necessarily know what it is about. Let me disappoint you. Uh, the uh, consumers don't tell the difference. I've had uh, two bi big projects. Uh, whether this is uh, the green leaf or any other pro uh, symbol, the consumers don't see this. Exactly. 
especially if they are to pay more because a non-dairy milk is eight, over 80 uh, slotties and uh, a regular milk is three. Uh, if uh, I don't, I'm not aware of these symbols, uh, uh, it's already bad. And if we are to tell uh, these uh, sustainable products, which are low emission products, we cannot really tell the, tell the distant difference. So if you don't see the difference, why pay more? And the consumer cannot really tell the difference. And uh, from our uh, research, uh, we know that the consumer is willing to pay a little bit more, but they have to have a very clear uh, sign of this. Now, Honorata, uh, the, uh, uh, there is a request from our viewers, viewers, and this is a question to Honorata. Do you feel that uh, the companies are uh, want to? Uh, want to adapt uh, to the uh, Green Deal, or uh, is it something which the customers uh, pushed to pushed to uh, act quicker? How do you feel about it? From our point of view, there is a lot of, uh, uh, is that apart from the uh, legislation, it's also about uh, the environment in uh, from the point of view of the main actors. So a big hand to them. There's a lot of decisions which are to uh, make the consumer's uh, choice easier. So at the end of 2022, uh, certain brands are uh, declaring that they were, uh, will be climate neutral. This has to be transparent. And so, uh, this is about the visual represent cooperation. For example, uh, between the uh, Eternity Institute. And we have visual representation, uh, whether it's carbon dioxide or water or other constituents. And if they care for the welfare of animals, of course, it would be great if there were pictograms uh, in the labeling, so this would be readily available and easy to read for the consumer. And that's why uh, such uh, uh, shopping centers are like, like Carefor, yes, such companies, such markets are responsible for the progress in this sphere. Uh, we can see uh, that uh, Barbara is, uh, holds a post which says uh, that she is the head of, uh, that she is uh, the head uh, of uh, quality and sustainable development and care for. So now we have questions about consumers in smaller cities. How do you see it from your point of view? In Poland, do we have enough supply of bio, various uh, non-dairy uh, non products? We have 8% at this moment. Now, is this uh, profitable for you? When it comes to the decision-making of the client, I think this is at the evolutionary stage. Today we cannot say that the key argument for buying a product is its, uh, let's say, sustainability. The price is an element which is decisive. And we can also say that there are various types of clients. We can generalize too much. There are clients who will reach for those products which have such features of social responsibility, health and protection of the environment, etc. And there are those clients who are uh, very sensitive and reach for these products, but there are also strong clients who, although declare their interest and support for such products, in the end phase, will this, the price will be decisive. So today, it's a very wide spectrum, one that is changing. 
and it is changing in the direction which shows that customers are becoming more and more responsible. They look for products from sustainable sources. So that means, once again, summing up, we have to uh, look to the consumer and we have to prepare diversified strategies towards the consumer. And that's exactly what is happening. Uh, Barbara, thank you very much. Thank you for your intervention. We have one question. We need a dedicated question to Conrad. It's a difficult one. How the Green Deal, how will it influence the success of various types of shops? Can we try to answer this question already today? Well, many entities, retail entities have done their job. Of course, those that already have, in the eyes of their consumers, are networks, are producers who provide such values as sustainable development product. If we are thinking about the future of Polish trade, we must not forget about internet, and we must uh, remember that people look to various websites to see, to hear about products, the video films, and this is connected with social media of various kind. And I think this is the future, something that makes it easier for the consumer to choose products, uh, being fully aware of what they choose. Okay, I just wanted to ask, the green color and the logo type would be good, wouldn't it? Okay, thank you very much. It has been a great pleasure talking to you. If they had given us an hour, we could have continued talking here. And I will now repeat the six words that I have written down. I believe that, first of all, looking at the Polish consumer, we must think hard whether he is still very economically minded uh, and that we must watch the prices if we want to have uh, the Green Deal. And this may be the greatest barrier in Poland for introducing the Green Deal. If we want to contact and communicate with this consumer, we must find a way. We must find the insight that may be the key factor. From what I have heard, I think the insight could be health. If professionally and uh, truly we would turn to the consumer and say, okay, follow this Green Deal path and look through the prism of your own health. This may be a way that will lead to success. We emphasize during our whole meeting that this awareness is still quite low and steps could be undertaken. It's worthwhile to undertake such steps to ensure better communication. I think that various entities still have their role to play. The regulatory bodies, for example, the adaption of European Union documents uh, that will apply to our domestic market, which will not be a penalty, but uh, something that stimulates. I think we have to devote more time to simple, clear, communication to the end consumer. So I have an empty card before me, an empty piece of paper. If you have some ideas, then please write it in. If you can do it online, if you think something else should be added. Thank you. Thank you for two words of thanks to all the speakers, Ms. Honorata Jarocka. Barbara Kowalska and Konrad Vaclavik, analytical field, Ninsel, Intel, and Care4, which we know very well. Thank you very much, and see you. Bye-bye.